Energy prices could uh, threaten the UK's status as a world leader in AI as energy for data centres can't keep up with AI ambitions. That's uh, coming from a report from the Social Market Foundation, which says energy costs and planning issues are holding back the supply of data centres needed to power the UK's AI growth ambitions. Well, Theo Bertram, director of the Social Market Foundation, is here with me. Very good morning to you, Theo. Good Thanks. morning. Thanks for joining us. So ju just just snapshot for us, uh, first of all, AI is a very data hungry technology, um, uh, uh, which it itself is enormously energy hungry. That's right. So actually, we're doing great as a country on AI. We rank fourth in the world, but we have an Achilles heel, and that's infrastructure. So AI depends on data centers, and data centers are the engine of AI. And although we currently lead Europe on data centers, we're growing too slowly. And what are the sort of uh, the, the hurdles we need to get over to change that? Well, the biggest hurdle is simply the industrial cost of electricity in this country. It's about four times cheaper to build a data centre in the US because of the cost of electricity. So that is our big hurdle, that and planning. Um, in terms of how much energy is used by AI, is that coming down a lot as, as innovation improves, as, as is always the case with these sorts of things? Is it likely to come down more or, or break that down for me? Well, the answer is both. So the actual cost of any one bit of AI work is coming down, but all of us, we're all using AI more and more. So the overall amount of energy being consumed by AI is going to go up. Some say it will be two times more, sometimes it's six times more, sometimes ten times more. But everyone agrees it's going to go up. Um, and in terms of uh, the sort of planning point you said, is that just to build the data centres or you're talking about to build power stations or wind farms or improving the, the, the energy grid to, to then power the data centre? It's both. So we think a key part of this is at the moment we have an excess of supply of energy in not Scotland and the north. You wouldn't believe it, but we actually generate electricity there that we switch off and don't use. Ever. We just simply, and we even pay the companies not to use it. And so what we're saying is you need to have what's called zonal or locational pricing, the idea that you could lower the cost in Scotland and the north to attract the people that want to consume that data to those places. So if you had those sort of, not all data centres will want to be in Scotland, but some of them may locate there if you were to lower the cost of that electricity. And what we know is you've got the wind there to supply them. And and so renewable energy is, is, is a good source of energy for data centres? Presumably data centres need energy 24-7. Yeah, but what they want is uh, reliable, secure and clean energy. Now, they can get that in places where we've, got, uh, um, uh, where we've got wind farms and where we've got that sort of clean generation. But at the moment, where they're motivated to locate is around London and the South East. So we need to find a way to incentivise them to go north to where the energy is. So, so let's talk about this sort of uh, dynamic pricing model. I mean, how likely is that in, in a relatively small country like ours? Is it something that you think would take a sort of uh, act of God to push through with politicians? I mean, there'd be a huge pushback in the South if, if people are paying high, higher energy prices to, to, to a different region. Well, we definitely think there needs to be change. If we have the status quo, what we have at the moment is very high energy prices everywhere, whereas if we can lower that price in Scotland and the north, then we think we'll see demand shift there. Now, the advantage of seeing some of that demand shift is that actually it may have a positive impact on the southeast as well. If what we're seeing is instead of everyone competing in the same place, if we can pull some of those energy consumers to the north and to Scotland, that will help. And we also want to to rebalance the country and yet there will be some tough choices and there will be some companies that, that can't move and will therefore need to be paying more but we have but at the moment what's going to happen is everyone is going to keep the demand is going to go much further than supply and that means the prices will keep rising so we've got to do something to try and address that um, and, and in terms of uh, the sort of supply of energy and the source of that it's interesting to hear you who, who, who sounds like a sort of clear capitalists on this and uh, wanting dynamic pricing and, uh, uh, and wanting to, to see um, uh, a greater supply overall. You, you celebrate the, the use of wind in this? Would you also celebrate more licenses for oil and gas and a greater supply of, of gas power station or, or not? Uh, we're in favour of more clean renewable energy. The problem that we have at the moment is we're switching that off in Scotland. So actually, locational pricing 
will make us will make those data centers consume more clean energy because at the moment they're all competing in the southeast where we don't have as much uh, renewable energy and so that's where we're seeing ai if we continue that way ai will c consume less clean energy than with locational pricing um, and today president macron's hosting an ai summit in uh, in paris is that something that is a worry for the british uh, ai community in terms of attracting foreign investment is is he doing well at that president macron well i work for a tech company and i remember literally um, Micron laid out the red carpet for us to go and meet them and they are desperate to pull AI companies away from the UK and come and locate in, in Paris. But at the moment we're holding on to those tech companies. Why? Because we have the talent, we have the universities and we have great startups here, better than anyone else in Europe. But the problem is our infrastructure and Macron knows that. Um, and, and do you think he's, he's on to something there? How, how, how close are we to, to, to seeding that uh, advantage that we have? Well, at the moment, we have more data centres, more compute power, as it's known, than anyone else in Europe. But both Paris and Frankfurt are moving faster and ahead of us. So if nothing changes, they will overtake us. And if you don't have the compute power, if you can't do the work itself, we will start to lose that talent. Um, you, you mentioned we're third or fourth globally. I mean, obviously, the US and China uh, uh, are in front. How far behind are, are us as third or fourth place? I mean, are they, are they just leagues and leagues ahead? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they are vastly far ahead, but that doesn't mean that there aren't crucial parts of the market that we can corner. And interestingly, when you look at how we're doing at university, when it comes to PhD level, we really are the champions of the world. So we've got great institutions in this country, and we should be championing those higher education institutions. Those companies that are in China and, and, and the US, they want our talent, they want our startups. Thea Bertram, thanks so much for joining us. Very interesting. Thank you. All right, let's get more on the Labour WhatsApp group.